Welcome to your next tutorial on API documentation using Swagger. In the past tutorial, we downloaded Swagger Editor, and then we downloaded Swagger UI, and then we downloaded Swagger UI Paste. Then we moved to Node Modules folder, and then we moved to scroll down to Swagger. And to Swagger UI Dist, we copy the full folder, right click, copy, and we went back to Swagger Editor and pasted it. So let us visit this Swagger Editor on our browser, and then we will also visit Swagger UI Editor on our browser so that you will see the two of them. Let us open our browser to see them. We go to our browser. Make sure that your server is running. Localhost slash server editor. And we'll hit enter. Just like we saw in the past tutorial, this is identical to the online editor that we have here. It's identical. But this time, this one runs on our system. So let us look at the Swagger Dist. So Swagger UI Dist. We are trying to access this folder. And there is an index.html folder file in this folder that will open up once we visit Swagger UI Dist. So this is the documentation itself that the users will see and the editor is where you build the documentation. So we have two items here, the Swagger documentation itself, the final completed documentation and the editor where you build the documentation, which means it will be wise for us to rearrange this folder so that we have the Swagger editor in, in its own folder while the swagger ui dist becomes the root folder to do that i'll create a new folder and call it something like editor and i'm going to copy everything except swagger ui dist into this editor highlight everything with ctrl a select all ctrl a on my keyboard and then I hold the control key on my keyboard and then click the editor and also deselect the Swagger UI list. Both of them. Then I copy everything with control X, I cut, cut, and then into this folder, paste. And there we have it. Our editor is now inside its own separate folder. And then our disk is in, inside its own separate folder. The next thing we will do is to copy everything here. Control, cut. We go back and paste it so that our Swagger UI disk becomes the root folder. We can now delete this folder. Delete on the keyboard and we're good to go. So if we visit Swagger Editor Doc, we will now see our Swagger UI. The reason is that in the end, we will. this is the folder we will upload to our server or our website hosting so that the users will access it. This is the folder that the users will see as our documentation. So if we go up back to our browser and swagger editor.doc, if we hit enter, it will take us, oops, Swagger editor doc. I don't know why it is remembering the past. This browser was remembering the past link. So what I had to do was click F5 on my keyboard so that it will clear cache when it's re refreshing. You can also just hold your function key and press F5 depending on how your keyboard is arranged. 
So this is what we will upload to our server as our documentation. Now, if you go back to the folder, you will observe some things that this folder makes use of a certain file that is sourced from Swagger's website. As you can see, this is petstore.swagger.io slash v2 slash json so it is making a call to the pet store now we need to make a call to our own json file so first of all let us go and build our own json file so we'll go to swagger editor online i'm looking for swagger online editor this is editor.swagger.com where we had pet store so let's just adjust this a little so it will be ours we're looking for Whatever we can call it, domain block, and um, so assuming we've changed, we've actually edited this YAML and we've worked on these APIs, and this is now our own set of APIs. What we have to do is to save this file, this YAML file, convert it to JSON. So we download as JSON, save file, save. So it gets saved. So what we'll do, this is it. So we are going to copy it. So we have it open right here. So what we'll do is get back to this folder and create a, a sample JSON file. We can call our JSON file. This is a text document. We can call it lumen.json, lumenblog.json. So what I'm showing you is how to get Swagger UI to read your own JSON file instead of the, the official Swagger file online. So hit enter, which is yes. So we'll open this. It's an empty JSON file. We'll copy the converted JSON file we had before. I'll control A then control C, which is copy, and paste it into our own JSON file. Now it's pasted, I'll save. The next thing I'll do is to go edit this index.html because this index.html is the file that displays here. So we get back to the folder, right click and open index.html with your favorite editor. Mine is Code Lobster, PHP edition. And now we've opened it, we can adjust it, we can call this is a traditional HTML that you know. So we can change a whole lot of things, including the style sheet and everything. But there is something we're looking for. It is right here. This is the URL it's making called to swagger.json. If you check here, you will see that this is the URL. All right. So what we will do is to link it to this file that we have here. We have lumen blog here. We want it to point to lumen blog JSON. So right here we will say lumen blog JSON and we save. And that pretty much solves our problem. If we come back and we refresh what we will have is a complete working application of our documentation as you can see it's now lumen blog so you can now upload this to your server and link to it from your original website as your api documentation and remember if you don't like yaml you can edit the json file directly like from here lumen blog you can go through it and edit the json file directly if you don't like yaml so in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to generate this automatically using our own local Swagger editor so that we can continuously, as we build, it's automatically converting this to JSON. So thank you very much for this, for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you've not done so, as more and more video tutorials are coming. Thank you very much.